The ranks of Russian ultra-patriots are in a despondent mood over the latest stunt by Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov, who has declared a blood feud against a senator and two state Duma deputies. During a large-scale business showdown, Kadyrov suddenly accused the elites of Dagestan and Ingushetia of attempting to assassinate him and declared a blood feud against two state Duma deputies as well as Senator Suleiman Kerimov, who is close to the Kremlin. The head of Chechnya publicly spat on the constitution and laws of the Russian Federation, demonstrating that he no longer obeys Moscow. According to Russian opposition political strategist Abbas Galyamov, this statement by Kadyrov is equivalent to a bomb exploding right in the center of the Russian political system. Kadyrov is not just the head of a region, but a federal figure, one of the top officials in the system. Of course, the Kremlin will try to curb this situation. It is impossible to leave everything as is, because this is too obvious a blow directly to the foundation of the regime in terms of public opinion and the mood of the elites. The analyst said, in an interview with Vasily Golovanov for the YouTube channel Fabrika Novosti. The Kremlin will not risk removing Kadyrov and will negotiate with him. Galyamov believes otherwise dissatisfied Chechnya may declare its cessation from the Russian Federation and this is too serious a risk for the regime. In this case, Putin will have to withdraw troops from Donbass and throw them into Chechnya, which will essentially mean the end of his rule. Putin now depends on Kadyrov to a much greater extent than Kadyrov depends on Putin. Yes, Ramzan receives finances from Russia, but in principle, he can go for broke and break off relations with Moscow. He has already accumulated resources and is quite self-sufficient. Putin and the security officers understand this, so they will swallow the situation once again. The expert predicted. Russian z -War correspondent Maxim Kalashnikov called the events a black swan and predicts a severe crisis for the country. Kalashnikov is confident that what is happening is the result of the failure of the war against Ukraine. And here comes a huge black swan that fluttered out. Not even a swan, but a dragon. They wrote to me from this front. Kalashnikov who told you that this SVO would end somewhere in the North Caucasus. Here is your confirmation. No longer a black swan, but a black monster has flapped its hellish wings. This is a challenge to the state governance system. In Washington, they are now chuckling with satisfaction. And in Kiev, where they are waiting for the collapse of the Russian Federation, the ignition of the North Caucasus, they are popping champagne corks. And if you fail a lightning victory, everything falls into a protracted war. You will get the effect of the collapse of stability. All the incurable wounds, diseases that were swept under the carpet, come to the surface. The effectiveness of the central government is called into question. These events have converged at one point in a very difficult, dangerous war when all troops are deployed at the front, when the borders are barely covered, when the enemy is already in the Kursk region, when we are faced with the needs of a new wave of mobilization. And this is already fraught with a serious crisis, said the worried Z-War correspondent. Smoke and dust was seen rising among the buildings in Beirut suburbs on Saturday from Israeli strikes on the Lebanese capital over the last few days. In Lebanon, authorities said on Friday that at least 60 people were killed and 168 wounded in the past 24 hours, raising the total toll over the past year of conflict between Israel and the militant group Hezbollah to 2,229 dead and 10,380 wounded. Israel has been escalating its campaign against Hezbollah with waves of heavy airstrikes across Lebanon and a ground invasion at the border, after a year of exchanges of fire. Israel is now at war with Hamas in Gaza and Hamas ally Hezbollah in Lebanon. Israel's offensive in Gaza has killed over 42,000 Palestinians, according to local health authorities, who do not say how many were fighters but say women and children make up more than half of the fatalities. The war has destroyed large areas of Gaza and displaced about 90% of its population of 2.3 million people, often multiple times. It's been a full year since Hamas-led militants blew holes in Israel's security fence and stormed into army bases and farming communities, killing some 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and abducting another 250. They are still holding about 100 captives inside Gaza, a third of whom are believed to be dead.